everyone, my name is Noah and welcome to this Stet Studio video. Today we are going to be opening a tarot deck that I have been looking forward to for what feels like ever, but yeah, this is going to be the Haunted Tarot deck by Killer Pancake, who is a friend of mine. She did not send me this deck, I paid for it myself. This is a non-biased, not paid for not sponsored video, nothing like that, just so everything's on the table. But the opinions are going to be entirely my own and I'm going to be completely honest with my review, although I expect to completely love this deck because I've seen a lot of the production of it. And yeah, I'm very excited to get into this. Now, I did back this project on Kickstarter and it arrived in the mail today. I apologize for the crinkles. It's been a while. I don't exactly remember which level I backed, but we're going to find out what came in the mail with it. All right. So the box is wrapped up. Here is the tarot deck. Haunted, a cursed Appalachian tarot deck. And I am so heckin' excited. I'm just gonna move this candle because it's making me nervous. We're just gonna put it over here like it for the aesthetics, but right now I am terrified that I'm going to light something on fire. We have the cloth that comes with it. It's a sort of uh, tarot cloth that you could do readings on. And this is the, at least part of the Appalachian region. It is a region in the United States that's connected to the Appalachian Mountains or Appalachian, which is, I believe, the correct way to say it. But I grew up saying Appalachian because I lived in the northern part of it. And that was just kind of how it was said, so I tend to still say it that way. And I know that that is a sort of divisive-ish thing. But yes, so this map shows the part of Appalachia that this deck encompasses. And I, I love it so much. It's beautiful. We have the sun and the moon. We have the squonk and mothman. And each and every one of these little symbols is one of the topics of one of the cards. And this is Pittsburgh. PGH is an abbreviation for Pittsburgh, which is where Killer Pancake is based, where I'm based, where I live. You know, that is sort of where this creation came to be, I guess. I don't know. But yes, this is really exciting. It's beautifully done. It's screen printed. I love it. And I love the simple finishing. This is just surged, which is... A really nice simple finish. I feel like if you folded it over like this, it would be nice, but it would probably be rather bulky. But the surging is neat and it looks good and the surging looks really neat. And since this is a sort of t-shirty knit material rather than a woven material, it's not going to fray. So yeah, that looks great. I am someone who's really interested in um, fabric and sewing and all of that, which is why I take notice of that. It's not, I suppose, probably all that important in the grand scheme of things, but it's an interest of mine, so I did notice. And then here we have a poster, I think, or a picture, some sort of print that I was the backing level for. I forget the words. I don't usually do Kickstarter, so this is new to me. Yeah, I think that's that's what it's in. Funnily enough, this is the type of envelope I use for my artwork, so that's neat. Yeah, kill, killer pants Killer Pancake Illo X Haunted, a cursed map for a cursed deck, featuring folklore, ghost stories, and history from Western Pennsylvania, West Virginia, and East Ohio. A map featuring some Appalachian history and lore. Okay, here's everything that was on the cloth I just showed you, but it's labeled. Isn't that cool? This is gorgeous. This is going to go somewhere in my office or something to hang up. I keep a lot of other artists' artwork in my office. It might seem strange to do that. Why wouldn't I hang up my own art as I am an artist and I create artwork for a living? But I see my own work all the time. So to me, it makes more sense to put up things that either people I know or other artists that I've seen here in Pittsburgh or around the, around the world have created because I find that very inspiring. And now that we are going to be not flopping things around, I'm going to bring the candle back in. I'm going to open this and we're going to get to looking at it. So 
So not only do I know the person who created this deck, and that's part of the reason why I'm excited, because I'm always excited when my friends make cool things, but also this is one of my areas of interest. I love folklore and that sort of thing, and I'm very interested in the region that I live in. I did grow up in Appalachia, like I said, but now I live in a sort of different part of Appalachia, I guess. So, you know, it's still relevant to my life and I'm interested in it. And we have the same little blurb here on the back that was on the poster. We have Killer Pancake Illustration, her all of her socials and whatnot. And we have all very nice shiny foil. We have the front and it opens up, it's magnetic. That's beautiful, look at that. Look at, how, look at that color, look at that. All right, put the box aside for now. Actually first, let's see what the rest of the inside looks like. Okay, it's got probably one of the cards printed on the inside there, I like that. It's a really nice box. I like when boxes are nice and sturdy but they don't take up a ton of room because if they're very thin tuck boxes, that's fine, but they tend to degrade quickly because they're thin. But if they're huge, like big set boxes, I don't want to use them because they're big and bulky and take up a lot of space. So this is the guidebook. It's a nice matte finish. It's smooth. Let me open it up. Introduction. This tarot deck is about life, death, and loss in the middle of Appalachia. The cards in this deck feature rumors, ghost stories, and folklore from southwestern Pennsylvania, East Ohio, and West Virginia. They also include historical figures who lived and died in the region and had a great impact on what it is today. Tarot cards tell stories, and reading stories helps the reader process what lies inside themselves. Whether this deck is used for personal reflection or divination, the intention is to connect the reader to something beyond the self in order to make sense of what lies within. Many different resources were used in the creation of this deck. A full PDF document can be found at killerpancake.org slash haunted terror. So it sounds like a bibliography of sorts. And we have the land acknowledgement. Haunted, a cursed Appalachian tarot deck was created on the land taken from Seneca and Lenape people. The Seneca people were the keepers of the Western door. Their land extended from our region all the way to the foothills of what is now New England. When colonization started to the east, they opened their land to the Lenape, also known as the Delaware, Shawnee, and others who were displaced. What is now named Lawrenceville was once a Lenape village, settled after their people were forced east by European colonists. Killer Pancake illustration recognizes the forced removal and genocide of native people in the region and across what is now the United States, removed from this land from the original owners and inhabitants. That is very true. Dedication. This deck is dedicated to those whose names were never written down nor stories heard. And then we go into the suits. And then in the back is the Major Arcana. So we have Minor Arcana first, then Major Arcana. So I'm going to open this up. It's shrink wrapped. You can see that the cards are foiled on the edges. For me, it's kind of hit or miss whether I like the foil, but that's really a personal preference. I know some people who think it's lovely, and I know some people who absolutely hate it. I'm kind of in the middle about that. It really depends on the deck and the way it's done, but I think the silver looks nice. It's not too obtrusive, and it seems like everything is separated nicely. They aren't stuck together the way they are sometimes. All right, now I'm going to bring you a little bit closer so that we can get a good look at what we have here card-wise. So the very first card we have is the Fool, and I'm going to resist the urge to tell you all who or what every single card is describing, unless I know off the top of my head, because I could look through this deck and find out, but we would be here for probably three or four hours. So we have the Fool, there's some stairs, it's very interesting. I like the sort of you're either coming up the stairs into the unknown or coming down the stairs. I like that. We have the magician. Someone who's doing some, it looks like, printmaking. We've got the Ouroboros. I think that's what that's called. That is the Ouroboros. I like the way the roller's up in the air. That's very, very traditional magician, but definitely has its own spin on it. And then we have the high priestess. She's got the pomegranate on her book. You have the towers, or pillars, I guess. Again, very traditional high priestess, but also very much her own twist on it, her own take on it within the theme. 
And we have the Empress. This is interesting. It's got a frame. I feel like the others haven't really had that much of a frame so far, but I think it works, especially for someone in this older attire. It's very much the time period from which you'd see portraits that look like this. So that's cool. And we have the Emperor. Oh, I love that. It kind of reminds me of Over the Garden Wall. You'll have to tell me if, if you think that as well. I do like the black and white. I wonder how many cards out of the deck will be sort of monochrome like this. And we have the Hierophant. Oh, I really like this one. There's something about the face. I just feel like the person, the subject, is looking right into me. And I also like how the the dress, that's the word, the dress, the skirt of the dress, sort of goes into nothingness. It makes her very ghostly, very ethereal. We have the lovers. Interesting. Very creepy lovers. It looks like it was folded. That's a neat aesthetic choice. It makes me think of when you have maybe a picture of someone that you fold up and keep in your wallet or in your pocket or whatever. We have the chariot. It's a train. That person's missing a head. It looks like the moon. I love the, the colors. They're so pretty. Each card individually has such a strong color palette and it's just really aesthetically pleasing to me. We have strength, number eight. The Hermit, number nine. I like that. We have the Wheel of Fortune. Interesting. And we have Justice. I like how the clock looks like an eyeball and she's got wings made out of maybe air or water. Number 12, Hanged. The Hanged Man, The Hanged One, Hanged. This card in particular is one of my favorites, so I always really like to see how it's depicted. We have Death, another one of my favorite cards. It's brought back that oval with the branches kind of from the Emperor. It's interesting. Her belt's got the moon phases on it. I like that as well. We have Temperance. The Devil, this is the Squonk, that I do know. The Squonk, if you don't know, is a cryptid that lives in the wilds of Pennsylvania, which is the state that Pittsburgh, the city, is in. At least this Pittsburgh, I know there's more than one. But the Squonk is essentially this giant wrinkly pig-like creature that is so ugly, he cries and just wanders around and cries. And if you manage to catch him, he dissolves into a puddle of tears. So that's... An interesting choice for the devil. I really like that. We have the tower, sort of satyr looking guy. It really feels weird to be going through this deck without looking at the guidebook and seeing what's what because it kind of feels like you're missing a lot. So this is definitely a deck that would require the guidebook if you want to know the story behind each card. But it also feels like with the way the art is, it's very illustrative that you could definitely use this deck very intuitively. But if you want to know the stories, you're probably definitely going to have to read the guidebook, which is obviously it's nice that it came with one. We have the star. This person's a lot more modern than a lot of the people we've been seeing so far, which is interesting. We have the moon. There's a creature there I didn't notice at first. Again, more modern. We have the sun. This one's a little more abstract, I suppose, a little less of a scene, a little more of just a feeling. Obviously, there is a person drawn. It's not completely abstract, but I like it. I feel like it really embodies the feeling of the sun, that sort of light in the darkness, but it's stronger than the star, which is very much so the light in the darkness. We have Day of Judgment. I like that. I like that a lot. And we have world which is the final card in the major arcana and we're back to that sort of frame that we had before move to the ace of cups oh this is pretty i love this i love this color palette in particular it's so pretty we have the two of cups i like the way they're holding hands and looking at each other, it really shows that sort of 
connection that the Two of Cups is all about. And we have the Three of Cups, Four of Cups. This one kind of reminds me of Greek artwork with the face to the side and the curly hair. So I wonder, I wonder if that was intentional or if that's just a coincidence or it's just a me thing. It's really pretty though. I like the way the splatters kind of create tree foliage. That's interesting and I like that. We have the Five of Cups. This artwork is really familiar to me. She must have used it a lot on her social media or something. It's, I don't know, it's, I feel like, yes, I've seen that, you know? I'm not exactly sure where, but it's very eerie. It's got that sort of Phantom Rider ghost story vibe, which is probably what this card is about. You have the Six of Cups. That's interesting. I like that. I like the, almost like a doorway. You're looking back into time with this card. We have the Seven of Cups. I like that she's using tarot cards at a specific grade. Grave. I remember, I'm pretty sure, this card is representative of a specific grave in a cemetery here in Pittsburgh that people go to to do readings at, I think. And I've heard that story. I've seen, I think it was in the Witches of Pennsylvania book that I read recently. Again, my interest in folklore. I think that it was mentioned in that book. We have the Eight of Cups, and I do believe this is the design, yep, the design that was on the inside of the box. We have the Nine of Cups. That is terrifying. Absolutely terrifying. It's pretty cool, though. We have the Ten of Cups. The Page of Cups really pretty. I like that. It's very vintage, but it's also very modern at the same time. It feels like it looks like something that someone would wear today dressing to emulate the time period these clothes are from, perhaps. Also probably has something to do with the, the very modern coffee mug. We have the Knight of Cups. Okay, this is another one from Pittsburgh that I heard of. I cannot remember his name. I'm gonna look in this book because I don't want to talk about this person without knowing his name, but this is someone who was disfigured as a child and would go on a walk at night. Raymond Robinson, AKA the Green Man, was electrocuted after being dared to ascend a fence close to an electrified wire as a young child, even though he was left horribly disfigured for the rest of his life. Instead of becoming bitter, he tried to see the best in the world around him. He took long walks along the roads of Beaver County at night, so not in Pittsburgh, but near Pittsburgh, becoming a local legend. People started to walk along with him and share beer with him while keeping him company. So yes, that's another one that I do know. We have the Queen of Cups. The King of Cups. Oh, I like this one a lot. I like the jug and the snake, the foliage. And now we're into the wands. We have the Ace of Wands. We've got a black dog and some fire. Very, very ace, very spooky. A Two of Wands, someone on fire. The Three of Wands. This is another one that is really familiar to me. I feel like I want to say this one's about the Satanic Panic. Let me check. Yes, this is the Satanic Panic card. I guessed that based on the dice. And the Satanic Panic, if you don't know, was an instance of paranoia. And a big part of it was to do with D&D, uh, &D, the board game, the role-playing game. The idea was that children were being converted to Satanism, were being taken into this sort of cult via D&D, &D, which is absolute nonsense. But it was definitely a very sort of big thing in its era. We have the Four of Wands. It's a very kind of nun wearing a gas mask almost. We have Five of Wands. That's terrifying. I love it. It's so creepy. We have the Six of Wands. This one's familiar to me. I think I read about this recently as well. A woman was accused of being a witch and that she would ride this man out into the night like he was a horse and it, you know, that's sort of like being possessed by a witch thing that was common in the 19th century and the early 20th century. I will link to the book that I mentioned earlier, The Witches of Pennsylvania, as well as all the resources and the deck and stuff here, but that was a book I read recently that I thought was really interesting. It talked about folk customs in Pennsylvania, specifically. We have the Seven of Wands, 
Eight of Wands. Oh, I like that. I like that a lot. The Nine of Wands. That feels very appropriate for the Nine of Wands. Ten of Wands. That's a, uh, not a pothole. A manhole cover. A pothole cover would hopefully just be more road. You have the Page of Wands. Oh, this one I know. This was, again, I can't remember the name, so I will look, but this was a man who was cursed by a witch. John Updike is on the receiving end of such a curveball in the form of a curse. After a little robbery and murder, he made a bad reputation for himself in, in the Union Town region, and a local witch decided to do something about it, drawing a small picture of his head. Each day, she would sketch a nail deeper and deeper into his skull until he eventually died. So, yeah, that's what this is about. I would say that's another one that I do believe I read about, which is of Pennsylvania recently. We have the Knight of Wands, very knightly on a horse. Queen of Wands, I like that. That's very pretty, very elegant, very, very queenly energy wise. The King of Wands, I like that one a lot too. I'm probably going to end up saying that for so many of these cards. Although we're already more than halfway through the deck, so you've probably noticed by now. This is another one I really like the color palette of. We have the Ace of Coins. Sad. I don't know if it's meant to be necessarily, but I just get sad vibes from it. We have the Two of Coins. Interesting. I know when I say interesting, it often sounds like I am I don't enjoy it, and I'm just like, hmm, interesting. But honestly, truly, no, I do think it's interesting, and I really enjoy that sort of... It makes me think, even if I don't know exactly what to say about it in the moment. So we have the Three of Coins here. That is a gnarly-looking beard. We have Four of Coins. I wonder if she's being possessed the way she's leaning into this being... We have five of coins, very eerie. We have the six of coins, again with the frame. I like how that is sometimes incorporated. And it's not incorporated a ton, but it is incorporated enough that it doesn't feel super awkward when it shows up. Again, another one, the seven of coins. Eight of Coins. This one I think is about a poltergeist or a house that's haunted or something, if I remember correctly. I like that though, how it's things are sort of floating and it looks as if you're looking into it. Maybe you're the entity haunting the room. I like that. We have the Nine of Coins. Love that color palette. The Ten of Coins. Page of coins, that's kind of freaky. <laughs> Dog man. His shirt says Pittsburgh. We have the Knight of Coins. Very showman esque. The Queen of Coins. You have the King of Coins. I like that. I'm going to guess this is a map of a city, perhaps Pittsburgh. I feel like it is. I wonder if this is the, the, the uh, representative of the people who created the first ambulance service. This is the King of Coins. Yes. All right. The first EMTs in the United States were black men in Pittsburgh's Hill District. The story of their creation and the work they did to save people's lives was hidden from history because of bigotry. After their success, the city recreated the program, hired white trainees from Freedom House, and demoted the experienced black staff that trained them. The stain of racism haunts our society still. So yeah, that is what I thought it was about. We have the Ace of Swords. Oh, I love that. That is beautiful. Look at that bird. We have the Two of Swords. 
I like this depiction of the two swords because it feels like instead of just having the two swords crossed over as is the traditional design, it looks like the two swords are maybe piercing this person and he may have to decide whether he's going to lead them in, which one he's going to pull out first, etc. I like that. It feels a little more of a sort of gruesome interpretation, but I feel like it lends itself to a lot of the really hard decisions we sometimes have to make in life it's sort of a you know maybe a lose-lose situation no matter what we do even if it is the quote-unquote right decision it's going to hurt it's going to be painful it's not going to be fun but it needs to be done that sort of thing we have the three of swords the four of swords that's creepy five of swords i like the framing of this one that it is obvious what it's about but it's not super explicit we'll put it that way we have the six of swords it's some sort of alien spacecraft it looks like we have the seven of swords looks like perhaps some sort of religious figure a pastor a minister Preacher, something like that, is removing some sort of spirit from something else. We have the Eight of Swords. There's that pig-headed person that's on the front of the guidebook. We have the Nine of Swords. I wonder if this is the Killer Clowns from 2016. Let's look and see. Yeah, the killer clowns are an urban legend that aren't unique to the region, but have popped up multiple times in Pittsburgh's history and made headlines while doing so. The rumor of their existence then creates people bold enough to bring the anxiety to reality. The first killer clowns were mentioned in the 1970s when people made reports to Pittsburgh police that it turned out to be inaccurate or false. Today, there are reports of people dressing up as killer clowns to scare people and cause chaos. We have the Ten of Swords. That's beautiful. Page of Swords. There's Mothman. Oh, Mothman. And we have the Knight of Swords. That's beautiful. Maybe in a coal mine it kind of looks like. And we have the Queen of Swords. And finally, if it won't slip away from me, the King of Swords. Okay, so this deck, absolutely gorgeous. I love it. Let's do a little testing of the cards. So the cardstock is a really nice sort of medium weight. Not too thick, not too thin. I don't feel like the gilding is too sharp like it sometimes is. It's not coming off on my hands super a lot. Maybe it is a little, but it's not like flaking off, flaking off. That'll probably stop once we've used, once I've used these cards a bit, but that is a pretty common problem with cards that are gilded, but this doesn't look too bad. As for the texture, it's the same texture as the box and the guidebook. Like, not exactly, because it's different paper, different thicknesses, but it's that same sort of feeling. It's smooth without being sticky, like some glossy cards are. I would call this perhaps a satin finish or a matte. I'm never really sure. I should probably know, but I don't. So that's the deck. It's definitely an average size. It feels good in my hands. I'm going to zoom back out, and we are going to shuffle it to break it in. This is how I like to break in all of the decks that I share here on my channel because I usually share them at the beginning of my owning them, like it's the very first time I've looked at them. As you saw, I took off the shrink wrap at the beginning of this video. It's just a fun way to sort of inaugurate the deck to bring in the aspect of actually doing a reading with it and all of that. And I like to pull a card, whichever one jumps out at me or feels right. We have Temperance. And I think since this deck is so reliant on the stories, or at least to me, it's reliant on the stories. Not everybody feels that way, but that is something that I really rely on, or maybe not rely on, but take from, build off of, etc. For my readings, I find that it's important to understand what the creator or creators had in mind when they created the card. So we have here, the temperance card is a sign of moderation, good health, and going with the flow. The water represented in this card is always looking for a place to flow and a vessel to fill. 
when Gretchen Hans came to Spruceville, Ohio in the 1830s. She'd been pulled from the only home she knew in Holland and lost her mother to an illness on the voyage over the Atlantic. Her father was meant to build the lock that now bears Gretchen's name. Two years later, after arriving in Ohio, Gretchen became extremely ill and died, pining for her home. Her father, devastated, stored her coffin within the lock until he could secure passage back to Holland. Unfortunately, during the return trip, the ship was lost at sea, and Gretchen's body and her father's soul were sent to the ocean. Local legend says that she's seen on the anniversary of her death, walking the length of the lock that bears her name. So that's the sort of information you get for each card. But yes, we pulled Temperance. Do with that what you will. If that means something to you, run with it. If not, just leave it here. And yeah, that is that. So that is the Haunted Deck by Killer Pancake Illustration. I hope you enjoyed this flip through. I would definitely recommend this deck. It's gorgeous. I love it. I cannot wait to get to play with it. I know that it might be a bit niche if you're not from the region, but I do think even without that connection, this card, this deck seems well thought out and very intentionally created and could be a very nice addition to your collection if you are interested in folk tales, urban legends, superstitions, that sort of thing, even if you're not from this region. And that's everything. Thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to like it if you liked it, dislike it if you disliked it, although if you disliked it, why are you still here? Go touch some grass, go spend some time doing something fun. Leave a comment, tell me what you think. Have you heard of this deck before? Have you heard of the creator? Do you have any of her other decks? What do you think of the theme? Is it something that's interesting to you? Do you like the art style? I love talking about not only the theme and the ideas of tarot decks, but also the art, because like I said, I am an artist, and I find all of these things really interesting. Also, if you're not from the region, what are some folk tales and legends from your part of the world? I'd love to hear about that as well, because like I said, I'm very interested in that sort of stuff as well. So obviously this deck was right up my alley. Uh, be sure to subscribe if you aren't already. We do a lot of bullet journaling and tarot stuff. We also do some writing videos, some art videos, definitely mostly tarot and bullet journaling right now. And be sure to ring the bell, I think that's the last thing, so that you know when the next video comes out. And yeah, thank you so much for spending some time with me in the Stet Studio today. Goodbye!